Yes. The Bible says that we don't need to bargain and make, uh, we don't need to tempt the Lord thy God is what Jesus told the devil in the wilderness. Amen. We don't need to make deals with him. Praise God. If you'll do this, I'll do this. Amen. That is not godly sorrow. That's just sorrow, sorry that you got caught. And if you wouldn't have got caught, you'd continue on doing what you're doing. Come on, somebody. Hear me this morning. Praise the Lord. But this man, he was just sorry that he got caught and it finally caught up with him. Come on, somebody. And he wanted Jesus to get him down so he could go back to doing what he was doing before. Can you say amen to me? Brother Allen said it best when he come here and preached. He said, at any time, the man could have went and got the prodigal son out of that hog pit. Come on now. The father could have went and got that boy out of that hog pen. He could have got him out. He could have cleaned him up. He could have brought him back to the father's house. But guess what? That spirit was still in him of rebellion. Amen. That spirit of rebellion, it didn't matter how many times he would have got him and cleaned him up out of that hog pen, put a ring on his finger, put a coat on him, amen, put new shoes on his feet. He went right back to that hog pen and started wandering around in him. Amen. He had to get to that to that place in his life where he was broken. That godly sorrow, amen, produces repentance. Praise God. And we see the one on the other side, he does just that. He said, don't you know that we deserve to be where we're at right now? Don't you know that we deserve every nail that's in our hands right now? Don't you deserve every ounce of, don't you know that we deserve every ounce of pain that we have have, uh, put on ourselves right now? But this man that hangs in between us, he don't deserve none of it. Amen. Glory to God. He don't deserve not one piercing of his body. He didn't deserve not one lasting all the way. Glory to God. But he went because it was the plan of salvation for you and me. Glory to God. He said, I know who you are, that you are who you say you are, Jesus. And will you remember me in paradise? Amen. He wasn't sorry that he got called. He knew that he deserved everything that he was going. And we need to get to that place in our walk. If we're ever going to be born again, we have to realize that we're the problem. My daddy told me something a long time ago. And it stuck with me. It said, if everybody else is the problem, everybody else is not the problem. Come on, somebody. That means that everywhere you go, Everybody is the problem. You're the problem. Come on, somebody. Say amen to me this morning. That means you're the problem, and you're not going to fix that problem until you do something about it, until you finally admit that I'm the problem, Jesus. I'm the one that's a sinner. I'm the one that needs a Savior. Glory to God. I'm the one that needs to be born again by the Spirit of God. It ain't everybody else. It ain't everything else that's happened in my life. It's me. I am the sinner that needs to be saved. And until we get to that place, as this man did on that cross, he said, I know that I'm wrong. I know I'm a wretched man. I know I was a murderer and I deserve to be where I'm at. When we come down to an altar and say, Jesus, I know I deserve hell, glory to God. But I need your mercy and grace to save my wretched soul. I need your blood that you shed on longer on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. To wipe my heart by itself. I can't do it on my own. I know I deserve an everlasting pit of hell, glory to God. But I need you. Amen. And when we get to that place, He'll do what He does best. Amen. Amen. He'll save you, glory to God. Amen. When we get to that place, so we know that we're the problem and we need a Savior, praise God. And we're not doing Him a favor by coming to Him. Come on now. Because then we think we're entitled to things. Then we think that we're entitled to all the blessings and the promises of God. And we are entitled to them once we cross that bloodline. But I've seen it all too often. People get to a place in their life to where they're reaching up for God. Because that's all that can help them. Where they're at right now. And then God 
reaches down and picks them up out of that muck and mire and sets them on a solid rock. And all of a sudden, he's he's right here beside them. He ain't leaving them anymore. Amen. And the more they walk with them, the more entitled that they feel that they need, that they deserve the blessings of God. And I promise you, the Bible says that pride becomes before the fall. Come on, somebody. Amen. Pride. And when we get to that place where we were so desperate and we reach up and he pulls us out and now all of a sudden we think he's our buddy and he's walking beside us. Amen. No doubt God is our friend. Jesus is a friend, praise the Lord, that stick is closer than a brother. But we all of a sudden get him right here and think we deserve this and we deserve that. Till we walk off and leave him in the dust. Come on, somebody. Amen. The glory to God. Amen. It's us. It's a problem. And it don't matter if you live for God for 50 years, you're always going to be the one that deserves hell. But the grace of God said this. Amen. That's where this man was at. Amen. This other man said that he deserved Jesus to do what Jesus does best and get him off of that cross and bring him back down so he could go do it. The other man said, I know I'm a sinner and I need to be saved by your grace. Come on, somebody. Amen. These two men were, I don't know exactly how far they were from him, but when I was praying about this message, Three feet came to mind. Amen. I may be wrong. Amen. But anyhow, these two men were the same distance for Jesus. Amen. I don't know if exactly they were three feet, but that's what they were going to say today. They were three feet away from the nail scar hands. Each and every one of them. Glory to God. And one shows repentance. The other one shows hell. Amen. Come on, somebody. They were the same distance away. They were both three feet away from the nail scar hands. And one accepted him. And one did. Lord, if you come on, hear me this morning. You may say, well, how can anybody be that close from to that nail scar man? How can anybody see the blood flow from Jesus? Amen. How can anybody be that close? Amen. And not accept Him? Well, you don't have to look far around in today's world to see the glory of God. Amen. You're just as close as they are to that nail scar man. And people shoot tail over Him every day. Being so close, but so far away. Amen. He was right there. He was right there. He was three feet away, but his heart might as well have been a million miles away from that nail scar hand. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. We see it all too often. Amen. People that's been raised in church, that's heard the preaching all their life, that know the truth, that experience God's blessings through their parents. Amen. Come on, somebody. We see it all the time. People's parents have truly been born again and their family is going to reap the benefits of it until the day that they come to those crossroads in their life. Hey, come on now. Amen. Praise the Lord. They, they've experienced God's blessings because of their mom and dad's decision. There's scripture backing that up. Praise God. Amen. And, and they still turn from the truth. They're three feet away from that nail scarred hand, been raised in church their whole life, sitting on a pew, still headed toward hell. Come on, somebody. Amen. They're still headed toward hell. Amen. The prodigal son lived in the blessings of, of his father's house. Amen. Amen. He lived under the blessings of his father's house. My kids right now, amen, before they got to, they are living in the blessings of the decision that me and their mother made uh, a while back, glory to God. I would say a long time ago, but it ain't been that long ago, glory to God, till we were down at an altar ourselves, begging God for His grace and His mercy, amen, and He saved an old wretched man like I'm like myself, but my children are living under the blessings that God gives us because of the decision that we made. And one day they're going to have to make it. Come on somebody. Amen. Praise God that the prodigal son he lived under the blessings of his father until he found himself in an old hog pen. Eating corn husk. Amen. Then he had to make it himself. 
Amen. We see it all too often today. Glory to God. Amen. People that will come to church, sit on a pew, but because they are not willing to let go of relationships or whatever the case may be, and they're not, they're not willing to uh, let go of, of things in their life. They're not willing to let go of their. I'm talking about church people now. Not saved people. Church people. There's a difference. Come on now. There's a difference now. Saved people are, their whole life evolves around Jesus. I've said this before. Saved people, their whole schedule, their finances, their whole life evolves around Jesus. Church people use Jesus like a spare tire. Can I say, can you say amen? Church people just pull out Jesus whenever they're going through a hard time, but when everything else is going good, they leave him in the dust. Come on, that's what church people do. That's the difference between saved and church people. Church people ain't gonna praise him, ain't gonna give him glory till he pulls them out of that ditch that they got themselves in there. Saved people's gonna praise him whether they're in the day, in the valley, whether they're on the mountaintop. They're just happy to be a part of his plan. Glory to God. They come in the opportunity to wake up each and every day and walk in His presence and be in His will and do the... Come on now, Lord, you're going to save people. There's a difference between church people. Amen. You can either be a citizen of the kingdom of God or a sinner or a church member. There's a difference. Amen. Glory to God. But people sit on a pew until they become so comfortable that they're not willing to let go of their worldly lifestyles and they will not fully surrender to God. And they're no, they're no better shape than that man was that was three foot away from that nail scarred hand. Come on, somebody. He said, well, Brother Shane got this going on. And we got bills to pay. And I got this going on. And, and you know, you just don't understand the situation. I understand completely. And I know this one thing I will not deny until Jesus comes back or I take my last breath that Jesus is the answer for every problem in our life. And if we're reading that scripture, He'll show us the way each and every time. Glory to God. It don't matter what we go through. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Brother Matt come from the city of refuge when they came and, and preached to us and witnessed to us that night. And he said he said, or I don't know if it was him or another preacher that he knew. Praise God. Walked, uh, watched a man come down that had been in church for 20 years. Amen. And he fell under Holy Ghost conviction one night. Right. Got up out of that pew. He walked past his pastor. His pastor's looking at him like, what do you know? He said, I got some business to handle with God. Amen. Come on, somebody. He'd been sitting on a pew for 20 years and never got saved because he continued to ignore that conviction. Continue to push it back. Continue to live how he wanted to live. Come on now. Didn't want to fully surrender to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. But because we were headed, amen, if we weren't fully surrendered to Christ and that blood is not applied, amen, we are not saved. And there's going to be a change. That's right. not going to happen all at one time. I know there's some people that claim, well, I come down here and I've got to say, and, and, and instantaneously, instantaneously, I was brand new. I don't know about all that because it didn't happen like that for me. Amen. 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 That was some junk right here that God had to deal with me in. And every day he had to take that old pride bar the Holy Ghost did and he had to dig it out of my heart because I just wasn't going to give it to him. Amen. Come on, somebody. But he knows where to get us to where we will give it to him. Amen. Amen. He knows how to get you on your knees to where you're sick and tired of holding on to whatever that is in your heart. And you say, God, I hear you. Well, I am clear, glory to God. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to quit fighting this battle. And he said that, that if we lay, and then he said that he would give us rest if we came. All that are heavy laden and burdened, he would give us rest. And then that means that those things that we think that we got to hold on to and we're willing to fight, if we'll just let it go and give it to him. He'll give us the rest that we need. Amen. 
He'll give us the peace, praise God, that surpasses all understanding. Amen. But glory to God, amen, that we live for a Savior that does not care where you came from, does not care how many times you denied Him sitting in a church, amen. Don't care if you've been sitting there for 20 years or two years, amen. But glory to God, all we got to do is surrender to the Holy Ghost conviction that we feel in our hearts. It don't matter where you've been, where you've been, but glory to God, all that matters is He wants you to come down here and get saved in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen, old King Agrippa. Glory to God. I love that story. Paul, he preached one of the best messages, amen, outside of Jesus. It's in that Bible. Amen. He's preaching to King Agrippa. And, and, and I just, you know, when I was reading that, God just kind of just was just painting a picture in my mind of the way things went down. And I could see old King Agrippa. He was white knuckling in that old throne that he was sitting in. The conviction of the Holy Ghost was all over him. Every word that came out of Paul's mouth was directed by the Spirit of God right into his heart. Glory to God. And King Agrippa, he was just sitting there gripping that pew, gripping that, that throne. Glory to God. Lighting up on that throne. Amen. And then he kept looking into his people that were standing beside him. And the pride of his heart wouldn't let him get up out of that throne and put Jesus on the throne in his heart. Amen. The pride of, of him surrendering to somebody else wouldn't let him make a move on oh, come on somebody. Glory to God. Amen. I got to know that's the it happened because I've seen it in churches time and time again. They won't let go of the, the, the facade that they got to put on. They won't let go of the image that they think that they got to put on. And they sit back there and white knuckle that pew. Amen. Until the Spirit of God has done past. Praise God. But He's dealing with them and dealing with them. I promise you, I want to encourage you today that if that's you, come down here and make the best decision of your life. Go to God and live for God and be saved. It ain't worth it. And I promise you, a king of Griffin didn't get it right before he took his last breath. And you could talk to him in hell today. He'd tell you, I wish I got out of that throne. I wish I'd have bowed my, my knee before Jesus that day. Responded to that conviction. He made him give it all because he said, Thou almost persuaded me. Don't be that one that was almost persuaded to come give it all to God. Amen. Glory to hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says we will stand. Amen. Before Jesus. He will deal with our heart. But He stands at the door and knocks. Amen. Amen. He stands at the door and knocks. That means when you're sitting there, whether you're at your house or you're in an altar service, and you feel Jesus tugging on that heart. He's sitting there with out the whole time. And he ain't going to kick it over. And he ain't going to run in there and rescue from the flames that you're headed toward hell. Amen. He's not going to do that. He's going to wait on you to open it up and step on in and receive the greatest gift that you'll ever receive. He said He stands at the door and knocks. Amen. I, I read that scripture after I done got saved and I thought, oh, my goodness, how many times he stood at the door and knocked. How many times I sat in that pew and I felt the Holy Ghost of God pulling me to that altar and I just kept clutching that pew. But I promise you one thing, on a morning service in 2015, glory to God, I felt the Holy Ghost of God grip my heart, amen. I told myself, Brother Marshall, it was time to surrender to Him, glory to God. I quit fighting that conviction, amen. I quit ignoring that conviction. I walked down to a pew, got into an altar, amen. Weeped all over that altar, cried over that altar, asked God to save this old wretched man, glory to God. The Holy Ghost of God pulled me to that altar, praise God. Amen. And I finally made the best decision of my high life is to give my life to Jesus, fully surrender to Him, and not be just a church member, but a citizen of the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Brother Larry, I love you to death, man. He's been, my, he's been a mentor. He's not just my father-in-law. He's my pastor. He's a mentor to me. And I, I love that I got to live 
close to him. Uh, amen. After I got saved, because he's told me many stories. Amen. His daddy was uh, was saved at, at a church. Amen. And this church was called the Shouting House. Back then, they didn't have air conditioning. They had to lift up all the windows to get some airflow in there. Amen. That was a Pentecostal church too, because I imagine they were sweating there, running around and shouting. Amen. The Holy Ghost just falling in that place. Glory to God. Hey, y'all know how it is, Lord. But anyhow, the windows would be open. And people would just come and look in and say, what in the world's going on in here? Amen. And some of them would just keep on going. But there's a man named Walker Turner that walked up there one night. And he looked in there. Didn't know nothing about Jesus. But he knew he felt something tugging on his heart. Amen. He walked up to that window. He looked in. Man gave an altar call. Glory to God. He come out through the back door. Amen. Went down there and cried and weak and got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Became a, a minister, a preacher, a pastor. Praise God. Hey, come on somebody. I don't know how many to Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, it's your choice. I mean, I'm telling you this morning, it's your choice. Amen. You can leave here lost or you can come down here. It's your choice to be free foot away from that damn star head and do nothing about it. But I want to encourage you this morning that it'll be the best decision you ever made. Glory to God to come down here and fully surrender. Amen. We're praying, church. Glory to God to get it to Him this morning. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. My favorite parable in this Bible is the parable of the sower. That's the first time that God spoke to me. Amen. In this passage that I can really remember in my relationship with Him. Amen. In the parable of the sower, of the sower if you had not read it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parable that Jesus teaches. And this man, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a planter. Amen. He goes around and he, he's planting these seeds. Amen. And he throws some on the wayside, which is this ground that, you know, the best way I can explain it is, is I love to hunt. And, and it, it's that four-wheeler trail around the field that you that you done tealed up. It ain't nothing going on over there. The weeds are still there. The little monkey grass is still there. It's going to catch all the seed before it has time to get 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 on the ground. That's the wayside of this, this sower. He sowed some seed on the wayside. And nothing happened before he knew it. The, the birds of the fowl, I mean, they come and they pluck the seed up. I mean, he goes on to say that some uh, some seeds were sown on stony ground. Amen. And, and, and the Bible says that it began to take but because of all the rocks and the stones in the soil, the roots couldn't go deep enough. And when the sun came up, it scorched it, amen, and burned it away. And then it said some were thrown in thorns and thistles, amen. Some were thrown in the briar patches, what we call it down here in Mississippi, praise God. Some were thrown, amen, in the briars and everything else, choked the seed out, amen, and nothing happened. But some were thrown on good ground, amen. Some were thrown on that tilled up fertile ground and it bring forth much fruit is what the Bible says. And then Jesus goes on to break it down for us and let us know. I want to read some of it to you in Mark chapter 4. Amen. The beginning of reading verse 15. And this is Jesus explaining the parable. Mark chapter 15 says, the Jews, And the Jews marvel, saying, He knoweth this man letters, having never learned. Jesus, oh, I'm sorry, 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, I pray that I'm on the wrong passage of Scripture. I'm, I'm sorry. Mark chapter 4. Amen. I'm in John. I'm just reading something over there too. <laughs> Mark chapter 4. Here we go. Chapter uh, Verse 15. And these are they which uh, were sown, were, th- were thrown by the wayside, where where the word which is sown, which is the word of God, the seed which is the word of God. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Amen. So close, but so far. Amen. There's people that's been in this church before. Just in this church, not not counting where else, amen, that's been in this church before and sat down and sat under Holy Ghost conviction, praise the Lord, and ignored that, and no sooner did the seed be thrown their way, Satan came and ripped it away from them because they were not tired of living for the world. They were so in love with the world that they refused 
to lift, to, to, to let that seed take root in their in their hearts. Amen. Praise God. Those are the ones that were, by the way, so close that the seed was planted, but their faith and confidence was so deep in the things of the world that they could receive it. Amen. Now we can be so in love with the world that we don't even hear God's message. I've been there. I know. Amen. We can be so in love with the things of the world that, that the Word of God just bounces off of us and doesn't take any root in our lives. Amen. Come on, somebody. He goes on to say in verse 16 and 17, and he says, And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the Word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterward, when afflictions or persecutions arise for the word's sake, immediately they are defended, are, are Amen. Because it didn't take any root. Amen. I thought about, amen, the Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Amen. There are people that come to church and think they're doing what's right. Because they think that they're, 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 served, they're living in their own will. They, they, they refuse to read the Word of God. They refuse to pray. They refuse to just they come to church when they want to. Amen. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. There's a way that you think that you're doing good. You came enough to church. You've looked at the Scripture barely enough a little bit to ease your conscience. You think praying for six minutes a day is enough. Come on, somebody. Amen. You think that that's enough. So it eases your conscience to think that you're doing right, but the end thereof is death. Amen. Let me tell you something. We need to be in constant fellowship with God. Amen. If we're going to be in a relationship with Him, it don't need to be, okay, we're going to do it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we're going to do it this Sunday. Maybe if we feel like it, we're going to do it, but, but, but it, unless everything lines up, then, then, we'll, then we'll do it. No, that ain't how it works. He said you need to be in constant fellowship with Him, glory to God. Amen. And these people where the seed landed on this stony ground, amen, they, they, they don't think that they need to pray. Amen. And it just bothers me to, to think that there's people out there that think they can have a relationship with Christ and not talk to Him. Amen. Unless you got your wish list out there. Uh, I need this, 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 and this done, God. And, and when that, 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 that happens, I'll, I'll get back with you in two weeks and I'll give you another list. That's not prayer. Amen. Amen. That's not prayer. Come on, somebody. Amen. No, no prayer life. No reading. Of, no, no setting time out to spend with Him on a daily basis. Amen. If you're married to somebody and you love them, because I know there's people that's married and don't love each other in this world that we live in today. But if you are married to somebody, you're going to want to spend time with them. Come on now. Amen. Because you love them. You love being around them. And if you're in a relationship with God, it's no different. It don't matter if you've got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. If you love Jesus like you say you do, then you're going to get up at 3 so you can spend time with Him before you leave and He'll make your day. And come on, somebody. If you love Him and you have a relationship with Him, you're going to make sacrifices so you can spend time with Him. Amen. And then people that don't think they need to come to church, I mean, I see it on Facebook all the time, you know, we don't just need, we, we don't have to come to church, we just need to be the church. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Because you know nothing about being the church until you're faithful to the church. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you can't be faithful to God's house three times a week, then you know nothing about being faithful to a call that God has on your life, which is 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Come on, somebody. If you can't be faithful to God's house, then there's no way that you're going to answer a call at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's no way that you're going to be in a Mobile County library and read a book on going to Honduras and be, be, be so faithful to God that you're going to answer that call. Come on, somebody. There's no way. If you can't be faithful to God's house for three hours a week, you think you're going to have what it takes to hold on when times get tough? Amen. That you're going to be able to hold on when people say, well, 
Well, Shane, maybe, maybe you just don't need to be doing this. You know what I mean? It just when your people that you love the most say, "Shane, this ain't us." You know what I mean? You need to, you need to get out of that and come back. Come on now. You think you're gonna have enough? You're gonna be faithful enough to hold on to that when all that happens? If you can't be faithful to God's house three hours a week, come on. There's more to it, amen. Praise the Lord, but I don't have time to preach it. Glory to God. But these people, amen, that think that they don't have to pray, they don't have to read God's Word, they don't have to spend time with Him, they don't have to come to church, amen, they don't keep their ground tilled up enough to remove these stones, amen. Come on, somebody. The stoning ground, it has to be tilled up enough to remove the stones so the seed can fall on the ground. Those stones in that ground are the things that separate you from the fellowship of God. And the only way that you're going to plow that ground and till that ground up enough is stay on your knees in prayer, read the Word of God, be surrounded in fellowship with God's people, come on somebody, and then you'll till that ground up enough to remove the stones and the rocks, amen, so that seed can fall on good ground. Glory to God. Amen. Then he says that there is a soil Amen. That there were the seeds that thought that were sown so on uh, the thorns and thistles in verse 18 and 19. He said, And these are they which were sown among thorns, and such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. Amen. Amen. I remember that, like I said, the first time that God spoke to me, that I remember, amen, that he spoke to me in the Word of God. There was a man that I became friends with at the City Refuge, and we had been there about two months, and he received the Word. He was so happy to be walking with God. But after a couple of months, him and his girlfriend, they made up, and she called him on the phone, and she said, look, you've been there two months. You need to come on back home, and, and we need to just start a life over and somebody that was so happy to be walking with God had received the word. Amen. He let the things of this world, the people of this world, the things of this world come in and choke out what God had done in such a short time. Amen. I remember going up to my, my bunk and I started praying and I said, God, give me a scripture that I can tell this man. Because I hadn't even read the word. I didn't know what it said. I said, give me a scripture that I can tell this man something to where it will change his mind. And he brought me to Mark chapter 4 and verse 17 and 18. And now, come on somebody. I knew it was God. It said that if the soul, the ground would deal up, that the things of this world would pull you away from it. Amen. It would choke it out. I run down there and told him, and, and he kind of, you know, he kind of hit him that God, that it, like he did me, it shot me. And then at the time, that God spoke directly to me, to this man. And he told somebody, but it didn't change a thing. He went and done what he wanted to. And I was thinking this morning of where he's at now. Amen. I don't know, man. I go down there all the time. And people that come through that program have passed away from drug overdose. They've committed suicide constantly. Amen. That they lost the battle. Amen. I don't know if that's where he's at. Amen. But it didn't look good that day. Praise the Lord. He let the things of this world choke out what God had done for him. Amen. And then in verse 20, the Bible says, And these that which were sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. Amen. Some stay in prayer. Some stay in the Word. Some stay in church. Come on, somebody. And they stay with that soil tilled up. Amen. And ready for any moment, praise God, that God drops a golden nugget out of His Word on that soil that it'll take just like that and it'll bring forth much fruit. Come on, somebody. I remember after the uh, Hurricane Katrina, you could go by there uh, weeks after, months after it happened, and these big old pine trees that were that big, they were all kind of leaning over like that. Amen. And because a pine tree has a tap root just as long as it is tall that goes down, amen, that seed took root and it and it made roots tough enough that even though the storm came 
and twisted it over like this, and they stayed that way for a while. You can go down that same way, same road they went on I ten, and those same pine trees twenty years ago, or however long it's been, is straightened back up. Glory to God. Amen. It's the same thing with the Word of God. It will keep that soil tilled up so that seed can take root. It don't matter what you go through. It don't matter who comes and goes in your life. It don't matter the situations and circumstances that you face. It don't matter if you're in the valley on the mountaintop. Glory to God. That storm may have you leaned over a little bit, but glory to God, the deepest the, the roots are run deep enough that you're going to withstand the storms of this life because the seed fell on good ground. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, you got a choice to make today. And I don't know why God changed my mind at 8 o'clock this morning to preach this message because He gave me this message years ago, glory to God. But I know it's for a reason. Somebody in here ain't got their mind made up. And I don't care if you've been here since I've been here. You've been here since this church started. If that's you, I want you to come up here and get real with God because I don't want you to go to hell. Because you're three foot away from that nail star here today. And the choice is yours. Amen. Amen. The choice is yours. Glory to God. The Bible says that to come and taste that the Lord is good. I'm telling you, once you've had Jesus, you've had the best. Amen. Stop looking everywhere else. It ain't going to get no better. Amen. You've got to stay right here and be firmly planted in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And your brother Luke McDaniel sings a song, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Amen. And until you get that in your heart, you're not going to have the happiness that you seek. Because you ain't going to find it in this world. Amen. You can go to another church if you want to. You ain't going to find it there unless you get real with God at an altar. Amen. And finally make your mind up. Come on now, stand with me all over God's house. I want to read a scripture out of the book of John where I was at earlier. John chapter 6 and verse 66 says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. These were people that followed Jesus. These were people that saw the miracles of God. These were people that saw deaf ears open, blind eyes open. They saw God cast out devils. Amen. And there came a time when they were so close but so far. Amen. There's, a, there's, I would go out on the limb, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident in saying that 90% of the people in this county have a Bible in their house. Here. Not everywhere else in the world. I'd be going out on the limb. So I'm not saying with, 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 a, with a lot of confidence that 90% of the Bible in this community, in this county, have a Bible somewhere in their house. See today, not everybody here is easily called God. Amen. They're so close when they walk by that word because what's in that word is the truth. And the Bible says that the truth is the only thing that's going to make you free. Praise God. He's three foot away from the nail star hand. Still make that decision. If that's you, if you're the person that's in here today, that needs to repent and needs to turn back to God or it had never been saved before, I want you to come and get real with Him. But if it's not you, I want you to bind together at these altars today because there's enough lost loved ones just in this congregation alone to fill this church up, glory to God. Let's bind together today. Amen. And pray for those lost loved ones. They're so close, but so far away, glory to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You so much.